can you go back and kind of tell us a little bit what was the purpose of the documentary and why did you guys choose to go to North Korea and China to shoot this and how did this whole thing happen? Um, so before we, you know, we, I take you, you guys to the, the fatal day of March 17th, I want to uh, share how I ended up working on that documentary about uh, human trafficking in China. So it was uh, 2005, I was working for Current TV at the time, and I got to know about documentary called Soul Train. It was about following, it was about following North Korean defectors, family, four adults, mm -hmm. and young little uh, toddler. And they were about to uh, enter the consulate, uh, consulate in China. So because they were told that if they crossed the gate, they would be safe. And they made safely to China, and then they tried to cross the consulate gate, and then they stopped by the Chinese soldiers. And then there was a young girl who was standing confused and then scared while watching her mom and grandma was wrestling with the uh, Chinese soldiers. At the time, I had uh, I just had a baby, and she was ten months old. Whenever I came home. Uh, whenever I held my baby, it reminded me. It reminded me of that little toddler with pigtail. Wow! And I told my husband, "We gotta do something about these people." I heard about North Korean defectors' uh, uh, dangerous journey uh, to escape their country and uh, their situation in North Korea. But my life was busy as well, so I kind of uh, moved on. And four years later, two thousand nine, I had finally had my own opportunity to tell their stories. And there were some reports about how numbers of North Korean defectors growing still, mm -hmm. and then their conditions, especially for female defectors, are really gotten worse in China. And they were prey to be human trafficking. Like they were sold to uh, farmers' wives, internet sex workers and sometimes they were deceived when they crossed and they didn't they don't even know what uh, they are facing when they cross the border right so my team and i were uh, we traveled to south korea and china to shed light on their conditions and it was a very important story to us to tell the world because there are so many stories out there people don't know about we thought this is one of the stories that people need to pay attention to their condition human rights in china so that was March 17 was our last day after it was filming in China. And we, next day, it was a day that we were about to head to the U.S. So in the morning, very early in the morning, we wanted to have the last shooting uh, showing the border between China and North Korea. So we were at the northeastern China where the Tuma River crossed between the countries. And that's, we're told that that's the uh, route that a lot of North Koreans take mm -hmm. to escape. And March 17th, at, uh, in that region, is still freezing and cold winter time. So river was still frozen. So we were walking the frozen river, and there was no sign of a, a border whatsoever, no wire bars or no sign. You would know that if it's the border, if we, did, we were not with the fixer. Our fixer was pretty uh, connected with the area and then aware of the situation. He worked for NHK, BBC on the same matter before us. So we completely trusted him. And when we were on the frozen river, maybe a few, about 30 minutes or so, um, filming the condition that how freezing it was and then where the, you know, this is the route that a lot of North Koreans taking. And one of our producers shouted, soldiers. So I looked back and there were two small soldiers with mm. their uniform with rifles chasing us really fast. So we all ran towards Chinese soil as fast as we could. One of our producers, male, was an avid runner. So he disappeared fast. And um, my fixer, our fixer was running next to me. He was like, you know, are you filming this and I thought it's crazy but I flipped my camera and put my on, underarms and then I was filming as I was oh, running. Wow. So while and you're running you're filming this entire event? We, you never know what kind of footage you're using. You wanted to show the condition right? This is the moment that this uh, the fear that a lot of North Koreans gonna face and in my head just don't if you shoot don't mm -hmm. shoot my head. 
I want to survive, right? And when I was almost close to Chinese story, I saw Laura Lin, my colleague, fell in front of me. And I stopped. And she said, I can, I can move my, I can feel my legs. And I, I didn't know what to do, but I knew that I could not leave her there by herself. She doesn't speak the language. And then we were a team. And um, our fixer was, and suddenly our fixer and me and Laura was surrounded by these two soldiers. And we heard about these North Korean board, uh, border guards that how you can simply bribe them. Even defectors, they can pay them to cross the border. Or sometimes uh, if uh, you're a journalist, you can give them some cigarettes to make a small talk. So our fixer was telling me that money, money. So just give them, bribe them money to escape that situation. So I pulled out or whatever in my pocket and I gave it to them and they did not want to take it. Wow. So I knew something was going wrong. And when my fixer was not able to fix the situation, he ran as well. Maybe he wanted to take one of the soldiers, you know, to, to, from the situation, I don't know. But I wanted him to run so that he can let someone our situation. Mm -hmm. Sure. And now, you know, if you don't mind me asking, how many total are you? Even the producer that's a very good runner, how many total people were you? Yourself, Laura, the fixer, the producer, <laughs> that's four. How many more were there? The, that was it. Oh, it that was, was four. Was okay. okay. Got it. Yeah. And he, I was wrestling with the, um, uh, the, one of the soldiers grabbed Laura and the, uh, the other soldier grabbed me. And I saw Laura was uh, fainted. I didn't know that at the time she was hit, but she was unconscious on the ice. And um, the other soldier was, uh, because I was beckoning and you know, I know I was trying to yell and screaming to, to get help from Chinese soil, China, he raised his rifle to, to hit me, the, taking the motion. And I looked at him and he was a, such a small, he was a small boy, maybe 17 or so. And he was hesitant to hit me at the time. So I told him, hey, let me walk with you. So I got up. You're speaking in his language when you're saying this to him. You're speaking in we, Korean when you're yes, speaking. Yes, I spoke okay. Korean to him. And we, I got up and I crossed the river with him. And that's how we ended up being detained in North Korea.